Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen. The subject of today's video, well, we are going to we are going to use that phrase complexity made simple because what I'm going to talk to you about is R squared in your regression analysis. Um, and we're going to simplify it and talk about what it's for, how to use it, whether a good R squared makes sense, all sorts of things. Um, but before we get into the reason why I'm picking this subject today, uh, I just want to remind you, my latest book is on sale, Statistical Process Control for Sp Small Batch Production. You can get this from lulu.com. The link is just below the video. Uh, we've also got, if you're interested in design of experiments, if you want to be a world-class engineer and you're interested in design of experiments, design of experiments for 21st century engineers, also available from lulu.com. And finally, if you're a black belt or a green belt Six Sigma and you want to know how to make pots and pots of cash for your company and be practical with that black belt certification. In other words, be valuable to your company, not just hang a certificate on the wall. The book you need is drink tea and read the paper. It's how to use all of that stuff that you, you learned in Six Sigma training and how to make piles and piles of money for your company. So there are the three books. Please click on the links below, lulu.com. Go buy one of those. Okay, so let's talk about today's subject. Uh, and it's really all about R squared. What is it for? Why am I interested in this thing? And this particular video comes out of the fact that I was I was just browsing through some uh, similar videos uh, a few days ago and something popped up about R squared. Uh, I think it was posted on LinkedIn as well. And um, I went, oh, went and had a look. Whew. Dry, boring as hell. So my, my videos are called Complexity Made Simple. The reason they call Complexity Made Simple is because I want to take some of this statistical mumbo jumbo and put it in context. Maybe give you some value. Tell you what it's for. Tell you if you need to look at it, etc., um, etc. Et I want to. I want you to understand why. Why do I look at R squared? I don't want you to understand how to calculate it or necessarily what it is, particularly. But I want you to know why. Why do I want this? Why? How am I going to use it? So let's talk about what R squared is. Let's keep it simple. We're not going to do any mathematics in this video because it's not what I do. Um, what we're going to talk about, R squared, very simply. What is it? It is a signal to noise ratio. Pretty much. Simple way of looking at it is a signal to noise ratio when what you are trying to do is understand your process. So typically, you've got your process. Here's what all your processes look like. You've got inputs, and you've got outputs. And what you're trying to do usually when you're, you've got R squared, you are trying to model and you're trying to understand what effect the input has on the output. And if you get a good model, maybe you can use that to make more money, get rid of some defects, whatever it happens to be. So typically, what you end up with is doing some kind of regression analysis. So what you might have is an input down here. Let's say it's let's say it's temperature 20, 30, 40, 50. Let's keep going. 
60 etc all right so and then your output let's say is the strength of the item that you're producing so you're looking at temperature versus temperature versus strength fantastic so you've either got some data or you've created a test you create some kind of model that can predict so if you want to go somewhere new if you want to put the temperature to 52 degrees it makes a prediction that's what this is about and as part of this you'll get this thing r squared r squared equals let's say 0.88 right. what does it mean it's a signal to noise ratio what it's telling you is this 88% of the movement in your data so the, the black crosses on this diagram right? 88% in the movement of those numbers was driven by the change in the temperature. So 88% is signal, 12% is noise. That's the way to read this, 0.88. Just read it as 88% is signal, 12% is noise. Now people get obsessed with this because obviously they'd love their R squared to be as, as high as possible. It tends to mean the data is clustering around your prediction equation. And if you've got a good R squared, what does it mean? Well, what it basically means is this. It means that if you put the temperature to 52 degrees and you predict the strength will be, I don't know, 88.6, if you put the temperature to 52 degrees, if you've got a good R squared, what it's telling you is there is a good chance you're gonna land around about 88.6 with a little bit of error. Yeah, so, because there's error in your model. Yeah, there's, there's noise in your model. That's all R squared is telling you. There's a good chance you'll hit what you predict within the noise level that you've got in the data that you've collected. It's a signal to noise ratio. Now, does it mean that you need super high R squareds all the time? No. Now let's go practical for a second. Here's the thing. This is a really good R squared. But let's say that the error that's going to be created, so maybe the prediction here, maybe is going to be inside that those error bars. The prediction is going to be inside that. But maybe your tolerance is much tighter than that. Maybe your, the tolerance that you're trying to hit on your strength is much tighter than your model is able to control. Is that good R squared in good to you? No. You can't practically do what you needed to do. And of course the other thing is, you can get the opposite. So you can get bloody awful R squared. So you can get data that looks, you know, like this. It's really well spaced out. So there's an awful lot of noise here. Yeah, away from the prediction equation. So potentially, you know, we could land anywhere inside the black lines there. And your R squared, let's say the R squared here is, is only 0.5. So in other words, the reason why the numbers move is because you moved the input. 50% of the movement is because you move the input. The other 50% is noise coming from somewhere else. But if what you're trying to do is to just drive your product into this sweet area here, Let's say currently your product is sitting down there, but you want to make the result go up to this sweet zone here where the customer loves the performance of your product. The fact that you can't actually predict the exact result actually doesn't matter at all. The customer is going to love it if you land up there. Now, you, don't get me wrong. Can you predict what's going to happen? Well, no, because you could be 
You could be anywhere in this region. But previously, you were anywhere in this region. Customer doesn't like this, customer loves this. Does it matter that your R squared is 0.5? Absolutely not. Your customers are dancing in the streets and you're making piles of cash. So, R squared, it's a mathematical number. It's a signal to noise ratio. And obviously if you had an R squared of one, what would that mean? It would mean that all the data falls exactly on the line. In other words, everything you did was signal and there was no noise. That doesn't now. Now one final thing about this, it's as I said, it's a practical thing. So sometimes high R squareds aren't any use to you. Sometimes low R squareds don't matter. It's a practical thing. What is it you're trying to achieve? The final thing to say is you can always make your R squared look good if you do the right set of experiments. And this is another reason why the R squared isn't necessarily the be all and end all. Let's just create a little bit of space here just to make my point about making a high R squared. Here's your input. Here is your output. And here's how you can make your R squared always look good. Won't necessarily be any use to you though. Here we go. Imagine that you decide to test these two places here. So let's say that this is 170. This is 174. Say it's a temperature. All right, we'll go temperature and strength again. Now obviously when you collect the data, you'll get a little bit of noise. You'll get that little regression equation. We've got noise, which is the amount of sort of natural variability in the data that you've collected, but you also got signal, the amount that the two averages have risen by. Got signal, you got no noise. Now look, my signal and noise here are almost identical in size. But that's because I tested at 170 to 174. Now without controlling my process in any better way, all I have to do look is to say, well I won't test in that region. I'll test from 160 to 185. Now what do you get? Let's get rid of this thing. Now what you get is this. You get the same amount of noise, of course. So we've still got that similar amount of noise. We get the same amount of noise up here. Okay, so the noise is the same. But what have you done to the signal? Well, you've made the signal huge. So now the signal looks this big. So suddenly, the signal to noise ratio, the R squared, is gonna look so much better. So, sometimes when you get a rubbish R squared, you wanna ask yourself, well, where did we test? Did I test 170, 174? If you did, well, expect a terrible R squared, because you, you, you've not put, you're not put any signal in your data. You have to put signal in your data. However, for all this talk about signal and noise, what's the point? It's about how practical is the model? Can I use the model to please the customer? Yes or no? And that's what you need to ask yourself. The R squared may help you to do that, but the R squared may be good. You still can't please the customer. So is it really important? Well, it's not a number that I look at a lot. R squared is a signal to noise ratio. It's telling you maybe that you might wanna open up your design space a bit and test in different regions. But the question is not whether you've got a good R squared. The question is using the model. 
can I please the customer and make shed loads of money? That is what you're trying to do with the models, not get good R squareds. So, what do you want to do, folks? Do you want mathematically lovely numbers or do you want to make more money? I know which one I want to do.